Welcome back to Rashley's Barbecue. I'm Randy. It's Labor Day, and today we're going to be doing a beer and chipotle braised brisket. Um, picked up a brisket over at the uh, store. We're just going to be doing the flat, so I've already separated the flat of the point and cut the, the brisket into a, oh, two and a half, three pound flat that will fit in my 12 inch Dutch oven. We're going to do this in the Dutch oven today. So it's going to be an all Dutch oven cook. We'll be back in just a minute. We've removed most of the fat from this brisket. I want to apologize. Uh, my battery died on my camera audio. So we're going to lay the brisket in so that we can brown it off. I've cut it into three pieces. Hopefully all three will fit. We got a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan. It's already heated up. This is a 12 inch Dutch oven and it looks like we're probably going to get all three pieces in there. Let me grab that last piece. Oh, there we go. All right, we're going to let that brown on bottom and then we'll come back in a little bit and we'll flip it. All right, we're going to give this meat a flip. <clears throat> It's browned on bottom. You can see that we've salt and peppered the top of it with some coarse ground black pepper and some kosher salt. So we'll grab all three pieces here and give them a flip. Yeah, getting some nice color on that bottom side there. Let's get this last one flipped. Very good. That looks good. As soon as we get them settled in, I'll go grab some more salt and pepper and we'll, we'll salt the tops here. Here's that salt and pepper mixture I have. Again, it's coarse ground black pepper and kosher salt. We're just going to put a light dusting on top of the brisket and let it brown off on the bottom. We may flip it a couple of more times, but that's basically it. So let's let that sit there and brown a bit and we'll be back. Let's go ahead and give this meat one more flip, take a look at the bottom and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's browning off quite nice. You see I have a full bed of coals underneath the bottom of the Dutch oven trying to get a nice hot pan to sear in. That's looking quite nice. Let's let that brown up just a little bit more and then we'll be back. Let's grab this cutting board with some aluminum foil. Let's get this meat oh yeah it's brown nice so we're gonna go ahead and pick it up cover it with foil while we get our vegetables on so let's grab all three pieces wrap them up to keep them nice and warm and we'll move them over the table to uh, hold them until we're ready to put them back in be right back okay we've moved the big bed of coals that we had and we've set up just a ring of about 10 briquettes that's what we're going to have underneath it. it. The ring leaves the space in the middle because if you put too much heat in the middle of the pot, it'll burn the middle. So we're going to get over here and grab our vegetables and throw them down in the olive oil that remains. You can see some of the stuck meat on there. This is one onion and about uh, five or six stalks of celery. And we're going to pop in some bell pepper, assorted colors. That's uh, probably about a third of three different bell peppers, so a total of one bell pepper in there. Here we've got a selection of spices that we're going to go down with. This spice mixture is a tablespoon of smoked paprika, two teaspoons of coriander, a teaspoon of oregano dried, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and a quarter teaspoon of ground cinnamon, going to put that down and uh, here in just a second we're going to grab some garlic somewhere along the way. A little olive oil we're going to add in there. That's just going to give us a little more uh, keep the vegetables from sticking as they start to brown off. Let's give those a stir and we're just going to kind of let those settle in for a while and then we'll be back. Oh, that smells good. Let's just give these veggies a quick stir. You can see that we moved the pot over to the left onto another full bed of coals because we weren't getting enough heat. So with that small ring of tin, 
we wanted to go ahead and get the veg vegetables sweated off so that's what we did let's just let them sit here and sweat a little longer and then we're gonna come back and add some liquids now comes the fun part we're gonna add a full bottle of Mexican style lager beer the beer of your choice I used Dos Equis I had half a bottle that I was drinking they got hot you know the, the heat will kill my germs and so I opened another bottle and we put a half bottle of it so it's a one bottle total of beer we're adding some fire roasted tomatoes whatever brand you prefer I was using the cheap stuff because I'm cheap that way not always but uh, these are good tomatoes this is chipotle chilies in adobo sauce now the recipe calls for two chilies but I added a whole can with the sauce and there's that garlic I bet y'all thought I forgot about it but uh, that's the garlic we'll give everything a good stir and let it kind of start to simmer in here and the next step is going to be the fun part we're going to add in some meat here in just a little while we'll be right back you can see we've added a ring of coals on the lid to bring the heat from the top and the bottom let's lift that lid and see what we got oh yeah she's at a rolling simmer now I actually need to reduce some heat so we're gonna pull some heat off the bottom let me do that I'm gonna get a ring of coals probably about nine coals on the bottom and then we're gonna lay the meat in so I'll be back you can see I've set up a ring of about nine briquettes maybe ten just a small ring that's all that we'll need to keep it at a simmer so we're gonna set the Dutch oven back on top of it move the lid and uh, toss the meat in there there we go meats all in completely immersed in the vegetables and the juice we're going to take all the juices that drained out of that meat and add them right back in so that's it y'all from here on out it's just going to be changing the coals out every 45 minutes to an hour to keep it at that light simmer and I'm not going to make y'all suffer through all that might just check in once in a while to see how it's going but for the most part now that I have batteries in my microphones and everything's working correctly uh, we're on the roll so I'll be back oh let me side note probably gonna go three to four hours just however long it takes for that meat to get fork tender but uh, since we're in a very liquid broth like that uh, no no danger of burning so we'll just keep that simmer going if it does run low on on juices I might add some more beer or some tomato sauce and beer and we'll just uh, we'll be back Hey y'all, we're back again. I've been changing the coals out about every 45 minutes or when the simmer starts to drop down to a really low level. Boy, the flies are getting bad out here. They smell the good food. Uh, been flipping the meat, just turning it over every hour. So I'm getting ready to turn it again. Let me go ahead and get it set up and I'll show you what it looks like in there and we'll let it go till it gets tender. Let's pull the lid and take a look. Oh yeah, nice slow simmer. See how the meat's coming along. Yeah, it's starting to get tender, but I don't think it's quite there yet. So let me turn it over, get it settled back in and we'll let it go for a while longer. alright so that's what we've been doing for the past two and a half hours 
It's about time to change the coals out, so let me get some fresh coals under that. and I'll probably just come back whenever it's ready to pull the meat and shred it. We're gonna shred the meat, puree all of the vegetables, and then put the shredded beef back in. Um, I did not dice the chipotle chilies because I want to take those out before I puree the other vegetables. Uh, it'd be a little bit too hot for my wife, I think, if I did uh, if I pureed the chilies also. So we'll be back. Hey y'all. Okay, we've got the meat inside. Brought it in. Dutch oven's still pretty warm. I took the brisket out of the sauce and we're gonna go ahead and pull it. So let me pull you over here closer and I'll show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it into pieces across the grain because uh, the grain is so long, the pieces, uh, the strands would be just too long. So I'm gonna cut it up a little bit, then we'll pull it. That's good right there. Now just, oh look at that, yeah, that's, that's wonderful. I'm not gonna tear it into too small a pieces because I like some size to my, my pulled chunks. So let me go ahead and finish pulling that. But before we do, taste test. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Man, that's good. The, the adobe sauce, adobo sauce on the uh, chilies is coming through. The chilies give it a little bit of heat in the aftertaste, but it's not too much. I think I may take, I left the chilies whole. I may take them out before I puree the, the uh, vegetables. So, let me finish pulling that and uh, we'll be right back. But before I go, the fire roasted tomatoes are coming through real well too. I mean, you can tell that it's not just plain tomatoes. So we'll be back. All the meat is shredded. There it is right there. Good stuff. So now we're gonna puree the uh, veggies and stuff. Pulled out the trusty old blender. We've had it about 15 years. I don't think I've ever used it. Well, not ever, but not recently anyway. So we're just gonna do a couple of batches of this. Try to leave the chilies out of it best I can. Now the recipe calls to shred the brisket and then to put it into the uh, puree after we finish the puree but instead I think I'm gonna leave the brisket seal it up so it'll stay moist and then use this as a sauce to add to the the tacos whenever we uh, make tacos so let's see how this works oh yeah That looks good. And that's probably enough right there. I don't think I'm gonna do the rest. So I'm gonna seal this up in a container. And we'll just use this as a sauce to put on the tacos or to add to the meat whenever we warm the meat up to put in the tacos. Let me grab a spoon and we're gonna take a taste of that. Oh yeah, that is good. But I think that's gonna be plenty because it does have a bite. So I don't wanna to put too much on my tacos. So that's it. Let me, uh, let me warm up a tortilla. We'll make one taco and we'll taste test it. And uh, I'll be right back. We're gonna do kind of a soft shell corn tortilla. 
Uh, I had dripped a little water in there. That's what the popping is. My wife is the expert corn tortilla maker, so or fryer. So y'all don't laugh at me. We'll see how it goes. Ah, it's working, I guess. I just want to get the edges a little crispy and leave it as a soft shell taco, so that's probably pretty close right there. If the grease was hotter, it would have already come out, but the, the grease wasn't real hot. It's warming up, so it took a little bit longer. There we go. That's good. Let's go ahead and Get the grease off that, let it drain a little, plate up a taco. All right, let's prep up a little taco here. Check it out. All right, brisket. Now let's put a little bit of this I don't know what kind of sauce you want to call it but it's just the pureed vegetables and chilies and all that good stuff add a little more because that's a flavorful sauce let's give it a go Mm. It's good. On a soft corn tortilla is a little bit different than most people would probably do it, but that's really good. The uh, the sauce somewhere between a tomato sauce and a and a mole. It's interesting. The adobo gives it a, a a dark chili flavor, something like a New Mexico style Southwest chili flavor. And uh, the heat is not too much, but it's there. And it doesn't come on early, it comes on late. After braising for three and a half, almost four hours, the, the brisket is just so tender. Mm. As we said in the beginning of the, of the video, since we're going to be braising it for so long, we didn't want a lot of the grease to come out, the oil to come out into the sauce. So I went ahead and separated the point and uh, put the point in the freezer. We'll smoke it or do something with it later. But this was just a flat, and I trimmed almost all the fat off of it. Uh, I apologize in the beginning of the video. I didn't give you the, the seasoning list very clearly because I had it all laid out and pretty much forgot what all I had uh, prepped up. So I'll put a description of the recipe in the description box with all the ingredients and how I went about preparing it. But just remember, when you read the ingredient list, make it your own. Put what you like in there. Something you don't like, leave it out. Don't make the mistake I made when it said use two diced chilies, and I thought it, put, I thought it said put two cans of chilies. So I put one whole can and went back and said, that's a lot of chili. Went back and read the recipe, and it said two diced chilies, not two cans of chilies. So uh, it's a little warmer than the recipe called for, but I like it because I like hot food. So I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, please click like, subscribe, and share. Tell your friends about the channel, 
and we'll be back soon with another video. Thank you for coming in, spending the day with me, and we look forward to being with you for our next video. Goodbye. Randy saying adios from Rashley's Border Queue.